Welcome to the HyperSim configuration video. In this video, we will show you where and how to set the parameters described in the HyperSim introduction video. The first thing we need to do is access to the Hyper Gateways GUI. To do that, we will use a program called HMC, Hypermedia Management Console. This software comes on a CD that is bundled with every gateway purchase. Once we open the HMC and access the gateway, we need to navigate to configure VoIP card VoIP settings where we will find VoIP parameters. Here we can see the three elements that form HyperSync dynamic blacklist, channel binding, and maximum concrete VoIP sessions. By default, the license is inactive. In order to active the license, contact your account manager or you can contact support for activation. Once the license has been activated, we are ready to configure HyperSync. Now, before you click on Dynamic Blacklist or Dynamic Channel Binding, if your Hypermedia Gateway is based on Hybrid Card, you will have to use the External SD Card option in order to save HyperSync database and CDR VoIP records. PC-based gateways have no such need. Following the same order as the previous video, I will start the configuration with Dynamic Blacklist. We will activate this option by changing from No to Yes. Once enabled, some additional settings will become available. Here we will find two main configurations. One part of the configuration will be for the destination calls and the other part will be for the source calls. So to do not get confused, I will do first the configuration for the destination calls. For this example, I will use some random parameters. So here I will put six. Then the number of the destination calls means that the dynamic blacklist threshold will be calculated for every six connected or dialed calls for the same destination number and will be monitored by the dynamic blacklist threshold. So the threshold for the destination, we will set ASR 30 and ACD 45. So it means that a specific number for example, 0555 is connected or dialed six times and the ASR and ACD are less than the threshold, that number, 0555, it will be listed in the dynamic blacklist. Now the second configuration is for the source calls. So for this example, I will write 45. So the number of the source calls means that the dynamic blacklist threshold will be calculated for every 45 calls for each specific source call and will be monitored by the dynamic blacklist under the threshold 30 and 45. So notice that there is a difference between the way that the dynamic blacklist manages the source calls and the destination calls. Following the previous introduction video explanation order, now we will set the parameters for dynamic channel binding. We will active this option by again changing from no to yes. Once activated, we will find the option channels binding limit. Here we will choose the number of channels that will share the same virtual address book. For this example, I will choose three channels. So this will cause that when a specific destination number, for example 0555, has been complete or dialed for the first time, the system will remember the channel that was used for that call and will add it to the address book. In this case, the system will remember and link the first three channels that were used by that specific destination number. For more information, you can refer to the previous introduction video. Now, included no answer call is an optional configuration inside dynamic channel binding that will allow the system to include no answer calls to the virtual address book. For this example, I will leave a note. And finally, we will go to maximum concurrent VoIP sessions. 
we will active this option by changing from no to yes and then set the maximum number of concurrent VoIP sessions that the gateway will allow. Normally you can limit the VoIP sessions direct from the soft switch side, but we wanted to include this option in case you manage all your clients direct from the hypermedia gateway. In both cases, either if you limit from your soft switch or direct from the hypermedia gateway, the limitation of the VoIP channel will help the address book to work properly. In another words, reducing the maximum concurrent VoIP sessions will allow the SIM cards to breathe and not saturate them. For this example, if the gateway has 32 channels, we can set the limit to 16. So no more than half the channels will be busy at any given moment. After setting all the parameters, we will submit the changes. A message like this will appear indicating that if your hypermedia is based on hybrid car, a SD card should be allocated in the hypermedia gateway. So kindly check if the SD card is already there. If your hypermedia is based on PC car, then no need to allocate the SD card. Now all the void parameters are already configured. So this part is already finished. Now I will show you the dynamic blacklist manage. For that, let's navigate to configure void car dynamic blacklist. Here we will find void dynamic blacklist manage page. Please check if your SD card is already inserted in the gateway. In this case, the page indicates that the SD card is inserted. Now, in the first row, we can choose the type of information from the database to be shown. We can search and display information related to destination numbers and also for the source numbers. If we choose destination number, immediately the total number of records for the destination numbers will be shown in this part. And next to that we can see the file size for the entire database. So now if you want to find a specific number inside the destination database, we can use the option single number. So we can write a number like this. In this case, I have this number and we click on find. Right away, all the information related to that number will be displayed. So we have information how the number was dialed, the date when this number went to the blacklist. We have the suffix of the number. In this case, the last seven digits from the number. And on this part, it shows the reason why this number was sent to the blacklist. In this case, because that number had a low ASR. So here it gives a complete information why this number was added to the blacklist. If we want to delete this record, we can click on the red mark and delete it from the database. So for this example, I will delete this number and you will see how the total numbers will change. Are you sure we want to delete? Yes. So notice that the total amount was reduced by one number. So we have the option single number. Start with if we want to find some number that start with the specific digits. And on the green part, it shows information on how to find. We have between numbers if we want to find a specific range of numbers. By date, if we know the exactly date we can find based on ASR and ACD. And if we want to download and calculate in our laptop, we can export the records to CSV file and remember we will be exporting only the information related to destination numbers. Now we jump to source number. And this part will work in the same way as destination numbers, but here we have a database dedicated only to the source numbers. So notice that the total numbers is different from the total of the destination number. In this case, we have 587, while destination number has 19,108. The last thing to show you is channel binding. So we go to the same menu configured VoIP card channel binding. Here we will find dynamic channel binding manage. The first option is destination number. 
As we explained previously, the system will remember the channel that was used for a specific destination number and will add it to the address book. So this option will enable us to see exactly to which VoIP channel the destination number is bound to. For this example, we will use the following number. He will get information about that number to which VoIP channel it is actually bound. So we can see that that number is bound to channel 26 and bind to channel 27. Now here it will display information of the SIM cards. In this example 27 means the slot number. In Hypermedia system the slots are represented by numbers. Starting from 21 which means a slot number 1, 22 means a slot number 2, 23 a slot number 3 and so on until 28 which means a slot number 8. Number 2 means the module allocated inside this slot and we will have a maximum of 4 modules from 1 until 4 per each slot. And number 1 means the SIM card position allocated under this module. Here we will have a number from 1 until 4 or from 1 until 10 depending on the hardware selected. It will also display the date and time for the last call to that number, also information about the suffix number. Then we have destination and channel. As we can see this window shows the number of GSA modules and number of SIM cards per each module. For this example, as you can see, we are using only one slot. When using a 32 channels gateway, you will see 8 slots. As we can see, we have 4 models in this part. And also we can see the number of SIM cards per each model. So in this example and for this system, we can see that we have 10 SIM cards per each GSM model. Now in some systems, it will show up to 4 SIM cards per GSM model. It will depend on which car model you're using. Just to clarify, when I refer to GSM model, it means GSM channel. So model 1 is channel 1, as you can see here, it's written also channel 1. And model 2 is channel 2, model 3, channel 3, and, and so on. Now the system will show which SIM card is currently active with a darker background. As we can see, all these four are being used for the moment and will also give you the option to delete the CDR history of a specific SIM card. If you want to delete all records with a single click, the last option will allow you to do just that. Thank you for watching the HyperSIM configuration video. Please contact our sales team or support for additional information.